Hear that? Yeah, that's the sound of you relaxing. Because now you're managing diabetes with the Freestyle Libre 3 system. You get to know your glucose levels and where it's headed. Manage your diabetes with more confidence with the Freestyle Libre 3 system. Ready to learn more about the number one prescribed CGM in the U.S.? Visit FreestyleLibre.us to learn more. Based on retail sales data for patients last full prescription by manufacturer. Refer to the Flare NL4 study published in BMJ Open Diabetes Research and Care 2019. Safety info found at FreestyleLibre.us. Sometimes it takes a different approach to help you unlock your true potential. With Capella University's game-changing FlexPath learning format, you gain relevant skills you can apply to your career right away. Earn your degree from an accredited university and be confident in the quality of your education. Imagina tu futuro de otra manera en capella.edu. Capella University is accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. Learn more at capella.edu slash accreditation. You can support this podcast at patreon.com slash partners in crime media. I'm Rebecca Lavoy, and this is Crime Writers On. Crime Writers On is the original true crime review podcast that digs into true crime, pop culture, other podcasts. And on this episode... A doctor said he could cure most ills with an alkaline diet. His patients learned the hard way he was wrong. We'll talk about the latest season of Chameleon, Dr. Miracle. Joining me to get that done and more is true crime author, TV journalist, and host of the These Are Their Stories podcast, my husband, a love of my life, my own Dr. Miracle, Kevin Flynn. Hi, Kevin. Hello, Rebecca. Also with us is private investigator, certified pet detective, resident cat lady, and author of The Final Curtain, Lara Bricker. Hi, Lara. Hey, Rebecca. And finally, our captain of all things cynical, author of the City Trilogy of Novels, host of Rip Current, Strange Arrivals, and our Patreon Deep Dive Book Club podcast host, Toby Ball. Hi, Toby. Hey, Rebecca. All right, so Kevin, Mm -hmm. this is Monday's program. It is. What's coming up on Thursday's show? So on Thursday, we're talking about the Netflix documentary, Into the Fire, The Lost Daughter. All right. Also want to like thank everybody who so far has donated to my Walk a mile in their shoes event again this year. I'll be wearing high heel shoes, raising money for the Crisis Center of Central New Hampshire. And it's a Taylor Swift theme this year, eras. Yeah. And I still haven't decided which era I am, but I think I'm dead poets, not dead poets, mm-hmm. tortured poets, tortured poets, dead poets, I, dead poets. It's so, alert. I, I, I'm, I captain bought my you captain. two shirts to choose from and they come from two different eras. Yeah, I saw one of them, but that was not yours. That was not your the medium wasn't mine. That one was for me. Okay. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not casting aspersions on the size you picked. I'm just... Yes. Um, but I, I did buy you two options, and you're going to be able to pick which area you want. Mm. Yeah. Should uh, I get a wig or something like that? You could. You could. I mean, um, is that, does that would, scream Tay-Tay if I was What would blonde? Toby do is the question. What would you do, Toby? <laughs> what would I do if yeah. I had to dress up like Taylor no, Swift? No, if you were like participating in a Taylor Swift-themed event... What would you do? This is a tough one to ask just cold. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I, you know, I'd have to do some research to uh, have some clue, but I'd probably wear like a tasteful skirt and a, a halter top. Yeah. Tasteful. Oh, yeah. a tasteful skirt and a halter top. I think, yeah. I think Toby would wear one of those Where's the Scarf Jake t-shirts, personally. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but sure, I'm up for it. <laughs> uh, I barely know. So we're about to um, record a review of a podcast that sort of focuses on like a guy who like like made diet recommendations and mm-hmm. wellness stuff or whatever. I have to tell you guys about something that I have been getting without my consent on my Facebook. Um, oh, <laughs> non consensual <laughs> stuff that I have become completely obsessed with, and I do not want to shame anybody out there in the world, but I have questions. <laughs> so you know how people do the keto diet. You guys don't yeah, sure. know what the yeah. keto diet is roughly. It's like the all protein, zero, ca- almost zero carb, very low carb diet with, you know, very often mm-hmm. there's lots of fats involved and lots of protein involved, but mm-hmm. like very, very low carb. I somehow started getting all of this keto content <laughs> being fed to me and I don't know why. <laughs> keto like, content. Like because you, somebody a, said it out loud and now it's maybe, targeting you. Maybe, I have a, I don't know. But I somehow get started getting all this keto content being served to me. And Toby, it reminds me of what you said last week about Uh-oh. the rules of the military and how, like how maybe they shouldn't exist because clearly they can't be followed. All of this keto content is just people sharing recipes 
for super shitty desserts they can make to cheat, basically, on the keto diet. It is the most disgusting shit you have ever seen in your life. Let me share some examples with you, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm completely obsessed with this so much that I look at it like... I, I mean, maybe this is why I keep getting it now because I've become obsessed That's with it. That's what happens. I get some really weird stuff. It's it's always interesting to see how they target you. Yeah, there's keto butter cake, which is essentially oh. just exactly butter what cake? it sounds okay. like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's keto ice cream, which is made with xanthan gum, salt, erythritol granules, avocado, and like one Oreo. <laughs> What's your pH balance after this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, anything, anytime it's a cheesecake, just FYI, it's not a cheesecake. That's a thing that I've learned. It's not really a cheesecake. No, I'm pretty sure you can buy keto ice cream. I'm sure you can too. I'm pretty sure I've seen it in the freezer section at the Hannaford's here in Exeter. Or you can follow one of these insane recipes, <laughs> Laura Bricker. Well, I have, so you remember, I, I went through this era where I was making all sorts of weird food and some of it was trying to get my son to eat healthy because he wouldn't eat fruits and vegetables. And one time I made chocolate pudding out of avocados. Mm -hmm. It was really gross. <laughs> but he ate like two spoonfuls. And I said, what do you think? And he goes, huh, interesting. And I said, what do you think the secret ingredient is? He's like, it's maple not syrup because you don't want to use sugar. <laughs> and I was like, it's vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. There's like, there's, there's these things called fat bombs, which is like really popular, uh, which is called salted caramel cheesecake fat bombs. 16 ounces of cream cheese, sour cream, swerve confectioner sugar, which is like a no Ew. sugar sugar, uh, a bunch of eggs, a zest of a lemon, some vanilla extract, and some sugar-free salted caramel chips. I'm like, you're going to be shitting your brains out. But so then my point is, like, I get it. You're doing this diet. You don't get to eat a lot of sweet stuff, so you're really craving it, right? So you'll do literally anything. <laughs> like you'll eat literally. But I'm like, my thinking is like, maybe this is not the plan for you. If this is if this is what you want to eat, like maybe keto isn't right. Am I am I like am I nuts thinking that like if this, if you're spending all of your time thinking of ways to cheat, it's like maybe you shouldn't be married if all you're doing is thinking of ways to cheat on your spouse <laughs> so then have them not find out. Like like I don't know. Is that not right? Well, I always tried to cheat on my diets. Like I was like, <laughs> seriously, like I've done various things over the years and I'd be like, oh, well, I can have like 10 M&Ms. And then I'd be like, but maybe I can have 20 M&Ms. And I was always trying to find, because I have a wicked sweet tooth and I'm like, I know I have to cut out the sugar, but I can't. <laughs> I don't know. I think when I went through the South Beach diet era, whenever that was, and it was like, you know, you could take like ricotta and you could put Splenda in it with like vanilla and cocoa powder and make like fake dessert pudding thing. And like <laughs> delicious. I, I've tried all those things because yeah. I'm a cheater. So are they cheating or are they just trying to work within the strictures of the diet to make something that reminds them of dessert? They work within the strictures yeah. of the diet to make the world's most disgusting food. <laughs> yes, it's, it's really that. It's really that. This is what I tell people when they try to try medical weight loss, which, you know, I have no shame about doing. You know, I have metabolic issues and I did uh, medical weight loss before it was cool. But this is what I did. I still ate the foods I liked. Because that's maintainable for the rest of your life. <laughs> this just does, it seems. And by the way, this, again, I don't want to shame people. This is what works for you. But I, I don't know why I'm getting this content. And I have become because you keep scrolling through yeah, it now, now and I, talking now about it on the it, podcast. Now I'm gonna so get that's it not going to help the algorithm. Now I'm going to get it forever. I got random like porn showed up on my Facebook, and I didn't even know you could put porn on Facebook. And I'm like, why am I seeing this? Oh my god! Yikes! Oh my god! Now I and can't then stop I'm like, looking. Don't look! Don't look! Because now it's going to. I was like, oh god! I've been flagged! I've been flagged! I've been flagged! Yes, yes. I was like, why Why am I seeing this? Why am I seeing this? I was like, oh my God, oh my God. They're, Which they're, one of your friends is posting Facebook porn? Nobody. It wasn't. I was just scrolling through like reels and I'm scrolling through all these like happy little reels like cats, relationships. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, big penis. Ah! They're trying to recruit her to run for governor of North Carolina. Apparently so. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> like, this has nothing to do with anything else in my algorithm. Why am I seeing this? Oh my goodness. Mm. Oh, wow. And also I didn't know you could put that on Facebook. I thought that was like against standards. I was like, ah! I don't think you can actually. You really? sure it was actually a penis? Did you go by too fast? Well, I scrolled by a second time to make sure I saw it right the first time. I was, like, I was just like, did I really just see that? And I'm like, oh shit, I did just see that. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, Houston, we have oh. confirmation. Yeah. That was so a if penis. you go back, you're definitely going to be getting that in yeah. your feed all the time now. All penis all the time. Zuckerberg is like, all right, let's see here. 
Uh, like the penis. <laughs> yeah. Feed up some more. Uh-huh. I didn't click on it. I didn't look at it. I just was scrolling through the feed and I saw it. And I was like, oh my God, why is that here? But they call that like eye time, right? The amount of time your eyes oh, spend. No. That's the thing that scrolls it. You've, you've had oh, extra no. eye time on that, Laura. God. I, I've got fat bombs. <gasps> you've got something else bombs. <laughs> Hot dog bombs. Hot dog bombs. <laughs> wow. Yep. All right. Well, Laura Bricker with the peen. <laughs> the peen feed. Hey, something for everyone on the fa- on the old book. Don't yuck someone's yum. All right. Well, I didn't mean to yuck someone's yum with my keto observations. I've just become fascinated and I'm obsessed. If anybody has any <laughs> delicious keto desserts. She didn't desserts, answer the question about she noticed the penis. She didn't know who posted it. <laughs> no, it was just like some random like bunch of letters, like no person. It was really weird. I was like, hmm. That's weird. It's that same it's like person. if you go to the real section on your phone, you get things from everybody in the public. Yeah. yeah. Especially since we've been doing a lot of reels. Yeah. All yeah, of a sudden we're getting all sorts of new stuff. So I get all sorts of the My reels. My content is doggest. Buckle up. It's doggest. How much do you pay for rent in New York? And weird fucking keto desserts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's my mm-hmm. entire like entertainment. Toby, what do you get? What do you get served? Uh, on Instagram, it's mostly badminton highlights. <laughs> oh, interesting. Mm. Yeah. Mm, speaking of shuttlecocks. <laughs> Not a lot of peen in that, too. Well, maybe. I don't know. What about you, Kevin? What do you get served? Oh, man. I get umpire baseball stuff. I get all sorts of things of, like, you see a baseball game, and then the, the graphic is, is this a strike? <laughs> or, oh, God. <laughs> did the umpire get this wrong? And I'm like, oh, Fuck me. Let's watch this. And now you have to watch it and make the yeah. call. I'm like, no, that was a good call. You just don't know what the rule is. <laughs> That's called batter's interference. You didn't know that because it doesn't happen a lot. And you didn't read the rule book. You just listen to Harry Carey's ghost and you think, oh, well, I know everything about baseball. Well, you didn't go to baseball umpire training camp for two years. Did you, mofo? Did you, mofo? So before you post that... I'm gone off. Before you post that, <laughs> maybe you should check with the real umpire, man. Yeah. You're like one of those people who's like, people are posting that they're buying Oasis tickets and they're like, yeah, what's your favorite song? You're like one of those people <laughs> now. Prove it. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> See infield fly rule. Google it. <laughs> All right, Kevin, should we talk about the podcast we're supposed to be talking about finally? Yeah, I think, yeah I think we should. We're only 12 minutes into the show. so <laughs> Let's get that done and drop our first clip right now. Leading off, he seemed to be absolutely sure that everything he said about medicine and nutrition and really life in general was true. He played God and he seemed so nice at first. Dr. Robert Young rose to prominence in the world of holistic medicine, claiming cancer was not a cell, but rather poisonous acid in the body. So a diet rich in alkaline would neutralize it. The charismatic practitioner opened the so-called Miracle Ranch, where sick people sought expensive treatments to balance their pH. We take better care of managing the pH of our swimming pools than we do our own internal fluids. Managing that through an alkaline diet and lifestyle is the healthiest advice, and it's inexpensive. You see, it's easy. Though he doled out advice and performed baking soda IVs, Young had never been to medical school. As his devoted followers favored vegetable smoothies instead of chemotherapy, their conditions worsened. It's about how terrifying things can get when people take wellness a step too far. Because some people on this diet would end up being dumped alone at hospitals. Some would die. And others would lose their hope completely. Chameleon, Dr. Miracle, is the latest season of the podcast from Campside Media, Sony Music Entertainment, and Dorothy Street Pictures. Host Larison Campbell recounts Young's pseudoscientific alkaline diet and talks to ranch employees and patients who received his quack treatments. It also looks into the difficulty of holding Young accountable and where he is today. Spoiler alert, we are going to be talking about plot points from Chameleon, Dr. Miracle. So if you want to remain spoiler free, go to the estimated time code in our show notes for our thumbs up or thumbs down reviews. Laura Bricker, we've listened to a bunch of seasons of Chameleon, and essentially it's about usually people who appear to be one thing and are another thing, right? You mean I mean, chameleons? That's, that's, the, that's the premise of the series. Um, do you think that this series sort of like fits the Chameleon brand as we've come to know it? Not as much. I mean, I guess for me, it just felt like it was a little bit flat. Like I was like, okay, we've heard these kind of stories before. 
okay, this guy's kind of a quacky doctor who's got some like crazy ideas and he's going to like make people drink baking soda and stick things up their self to cleanse their body or whatever. And I was like, eh, I don't know. I didn't feel like it was like as shocking of a double life. I think it was like you're listening to it and you're like, yeah, okay, this guy's going to get found out eventually. And there's some people that are following this because they are like, oh, we're going to the wellness ranch or the miracle ranch or whatever it was called. But I liked the ones where people really had like a super double life or like much more shocking backstory. This particular one, I'm like, he was negligent. He misled people. He hurt his patients. I think the most shocking thing to me was his singing when he was singing that Christmas song. <laughs> the one that was like, do, 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 do on Christmas Day. Oh, <laughs> Isn't that from like the, um, was it the Polar Express song or something? That was the most shocking thing about that guy's background for me. <laughs> so, Toby, do you feel like there's a familiarity to this story? Yeah, I mean, I I feel like all the story beats are ones that we've heard before probably numerous times. I kept waiting for it to diverge from that sort of pretty uh, common and familiar story arc, and it just doesn't, you know? I mean, it's it's the usual thing where, like, he hoodwinks people, people show up, some people are really sick, his quack snake oil doesn't really work, some people die, he gets found out, gets his comeuppance, Victims don't really receive the benefits that maybe they deserve. The guy becomes a right wing conspiracy hero and end scene. So (laughs) I don't know why they picked this story in particular, because it doesn't really stand out from again. I mean, like Laura said, I feel like this is maybe like the fifth at least podcast or show that we've experienced that has basically the same story. It's just the, the, you know, the faces are a little different. Yeah. I mean, I think we've seen. We're talking about the source material here. We see there's a very similarity between this and Dr. Death Season 2, and Dr. Death Season 4, and Miracle Cure, to some extent, the dropout. And then we also have sort of like the quasi-cult stories here where, you know, like Dr. Dante, Mystic Mother, Savior Complex, Cult of Mother God. Cult of Mother God also had like that silver crappy yeah, stuff in colloidal it. colloidal silver. There you go. Oh, is that the one where she was like mummified? Yeah, she turned purple. Oh, that was so green, weird. So blue. So, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She, she was, yeah. So That was bananas, by yeah, the way. So we have seen this before. You're right, and you're kind of expecting something, I'm going to say something different, but it has the same beats. I think the larger issue is that you're in the desire for the bloodless crime that so many creators want to make in part because of the backlash because of the horror tinged ghoulish serial killer type of stories you know people don't want to like make that kind of true crime it's ghoulish and they look down on it they want something a little more interesting the con man stuff like that really kind of exploded but the problem becomes that those stories do start to blend together because there are similarities and while we haven't covered a medical con in a while More than a year, we haven't done one, although maybe there are other ones that have been out. It still feels like, you know, we know the tale. And like any good mystery, if you can guess the mystery, then the story's no good. And so there are some things at the end which are a little surprising, and I do like those. But for the most part, you're like, oh, yeah, this he's got a thing. He's going to fool a lot of people. Something's going to happen, and hopefully he gets his comeuppance, you know, and that's that. Yeah. So, Toby, sometimes there's like a pairing, right? A story pairing where, you know, this has happened to us before, by the way. It happened to us with a Kathleen Goldhar podcast where we loved the first thing that Kathleen Goldhar made and then we did not love the second thing that Kathleen Goldhar made. Um, Laris and Campbell's first podcast that we reviewed, like we all loved, Witness Devil in the Ditch, which was a very personal story about like who killed her own grandmother and you know it was this very like southern gothic story she's a great writer for herself great storyteller and although we hear in this that she has been a health reporter and has covered like public health and really understands this world to some extent do you feel like this is a good like match for her narratively in long form audio journalism yeah you know i was interested to see what she did next because i I think a lot like kathleen goldhar the first thing she did was tell a story that she was personally involved with. So then it's like, okay, well, you're going to make another one. Unless you've lived a super interesting life, there's probably not two things that are going to carry like a long Another form best friend who podcast. was also duped. <laughs> yeah. So best friend, the duper. So it's like, where are you going to go and what are you going to do? And are you going to be able to keep 
your narrative voice that was probably easy to find when you're talking about things that you're that familiar with. Again, I just, I, this story just feels kind of, I hate to say run of the mill, but that's kind of the way it comes off. And I don't think it uses her to her best advantage. Like if this was the first thing we'd heard from her, it wouldn't necessarily stick in my mind. Like, Oh, this host is somebody we need to keep an eye on as opposed to devil in the ditch where it's like, Oh God, like she's awesome. So I wish there was more of her and I, you know, who knows how this whole thing developed and maybe they thought something was going to change or whatever. When it was over, I was trying to think about like, what would have made this sort of a more satisfying listen And, you know, she does have good access to a few different people, especially with this woman, Dawn, who she seems like she's with for quite a while and sort of follows her journey. And I wonder if it could have been told even a little bit more from her eyes and sort of this idea of sort of immersing yourself in the experience of being involved in it. Because you kind of know from the beginning that it's a scam and that nothing good is going to come of it. But I at least didn't get like a very strong sort of visceral sense of what's attractive. Like, how does it draw people in? It's sort of described as like, okay, well, it's like new agey type people. And, you know, there's these different beliefs, but, you know, what's it like to really have like a life threatening condition and you're willing to go to this guy who, if you do any research, you'll find out that he's not really a doctor. And as a matter of fact, he's not even like a person who has a bachelor. He spent 18 months and got three degrees from some, you know, degree mill in Alabama. You know, what's going on when you literally trust your life to somebody who, outside of this realm of new agey stuff, just seems so clearly a scammer? Yeah. So the thing I want to come back to uh, that Toby brought up about Larison is that she's got really great writing skills. And we, we heard a lot of that in Devil in the Ditch. And we get bits of it here where she's, you know, when talking about the stuff going on around the whole holistic, new agey, goopy feel like, you know, we, we get some of that from her. I'm in my 40s and from Mississippi, where you're far likelier to find racks of ribs than bone broth. But I also grew up in the 1980s and 90s, when following fad diets was practically an act of virtue. She kind of plays it straight in a lot of other things. And, you know, it's sort of like, okay, well, which club from the bag are you supposed to pull out for this, you know, fairway? And, you know, maybe like you you don't want to be all jokey and whatnot. You don't want to go all Jane Marie on this, right? But you could see like, okay, well, Madeline Barron made a podcast about war crimes. So did Dan Taberski. And like their flavors are, are different. And both of those two creators really played to their strengths. So I, I don't know. I mean, I guess if I would have done something different, I would have let her be her a little more. You know, I don't know. I mean, this is chameleon. It's about a scam artist. And so that's where your focus ought to be. But I just feel like that's kind of what I feel like I didn't get from her that I really wanted to because she's She's excelling at that. And so, you know, let's let's let her loose and, and run free. There is fodder here, right, Laura, though, because she talks about having tried like every trend herself right. uh, as as she was, you know, in the 90s and early 2000s, like as we both did, I'm sure, too. And you talk about doing like, I mean, this is something that you, you're familiar with and it is funny in many ways. Well, it is. And I agree with what Kevin's saying, because I think if there had been a little more personality brought in and allowed to come in from the host, that could have made this more engaging instead of so sort of like, oh, it's another doctor who's doing some quacky procedure and we know what's going to happen. Because I remember, like, I remember I worked in the newsroom and there was somebody in the newsroom when I was a like, new reporter that was on like this wasabi pea and Bing cherry diet. And then there was like, <sighs> Jesus. I know. So many. I just ate a whole was- handful of wasabi peas. There's a whole diet <laughs> on it. What kind of desserts did they make with wasabis and diet peas? <laughs> um, but, you know, I remember going through the South Beach diet. I remember when everybody was doing the South Beach diet and like, you've got to stick with phase one. Know this, know that for two weeks. Like when everything, I remember in college when Atkins came out and this person I went to college with was just eating like eggs and steak all the time. And I was like, <laughs> gross. Like <laughs> Rolled up ham. And bacon. And like, I love bacon, but like. I don't know. So, I mean, I think there is something that is very relatable. We can all pretend we haven't tried some oh, sort of- Oh, we all have. We have all tried. I have tried all sorts of things over the years. I've been like, oh yeah. And like, I was cleaning out my grandmother's things at one point and I found like things that she had saved, um, you know, in like the 60s and 70s that were like the cabbage soup diet. And then there's one where, you know, you'd see like you eat one hard boiled egg for breakfast 
And then you have like a cold glass two, of white wine. I see, yeah, I've never seen like that one in like, the 70s. <laughs> yeah. The thing to me that I think is interesting is just sort of like the psychology of how we get sucked into these things that we think are going to be like, we do this. This is going to be pretty life changing. Like, you know, if I get on the celery root soup diet by next week, I am going to be my life is going to be changed. So I think that sort of aspect of being why we're drawn into these and how being drawn into these like how we all collectively do that and how it ends up with a case like this where people are like literally having like colon cleanses and eating freaking avocados and tomatoes, but not being allowed to chew for three weeks or some nonsense, you know? Yeah. 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 Hey, you won't need a colon cleanse if you join us on Patreon. We'll never ask you to do that. What? <laughs> no, no, no. Not even Toby? He won't ask you to do that? That's why it's called the deep dive. <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> oh, wow. Good night, folks. Uh, and scene. And scene, yeah. Oh, but let me tell you a little more about Patreon really quickly. You go to patreon.com slash partners in crime media it's not as probing as one might think uh, you get great exclusive podcasts including the crime writers on after show this week rebecca and i are going to talk about a plane encounter we went down to savannah georgia and there was a surprise person on the airplane and we will tell you all about that's who what we're that talking was. about about our trip that's like the least interesting thing that happened on our trip well we'll talk about more of the trip but when that happened i turned to you and i said this is the after show. Oh, yeah. Uh, other great things that you get include Toby Ball's Deep Dive Book Club. This latest episode of the podcast covers The Wager is the name of the book, and it's not about Las Vegas. It's not about Las Vegas. It's actually about a ill-fated ship called The Wager that was uh, trying to round the tip of South America and got wrecked and survivors stayed on a beach and rebuilt their boat and you know it's just one of those things where it's like years and years and years and they finally make it back to England after all this like terrible hardship and being captured and starving and all this stuff and then they get back and to face a court martial you know <laughs> so no good deed amazing no good deed other exclusive podcasts include married with podcasts that's our Relationship Advice Podcast. Rebecca and I took a question from a listener who accumulated money in bonds for her two sons to go to college. And one son just completed college. It's got a good nest egg. And the other son decided he doesn't want to go. So the mom wants to know, should she cash out the bonds and give it all to the one son? Because the son thinks that that's what she should do. Because he needs a down payment for a house at age 24. Or... Should she, like, hang on to it and let both sons eventually decide what to do for it? You'll just have to listen to see what our advice was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can probably guess what my advice was. Yeah. And uh, the latest episode of Leave It to Bricker has to do with the UFO Festival in Exeter. Oh. But staying on the strange and unexplained, Laura Bricker, tell us about what is coming up in the next episode of Leave it to Bricker. In the next episode, I am going to the Sasquatch Calling Contest nice. in upstate New York to find out what exactly goes into calling a Sasquatch. Who wants to call one? Like, who are these people? I, I saw this on like CBS Sunday morning and I was like, I have to go check this out. Is it in Whitehall? It's in Whitehall, yes. Yeah. Have you been, Toby? No, I got a t-shirt though. What? Yeah. You've got a t-shirt? I got oh, it my for gosh. Christmas. Yeah. So if you stay tuned and you're following us on Instagram now, we're doing a bunch of reels. I'm doing some reels to kind of preview what will be coming in upcoming Leave it to Brickers. So you can see some uh, photo and video evidence of some of these excursions I'm going on. Nice. Amazing. Amazing. And one other podcast I want to let you know about. Rebecca has an ongoing series about the Karen Reed trial and it's called the Readathon. Oh, and there are some updates. There's an updates, including a new prosecutor mm -hmm. in the case. We'll get to... Rebecca's thoughts on that. Last thing I want to ask you to do is if you could sign up for our newsletter. It comes out every Thursday. It's absolutely free. You won't get any ads in it. No spam. I mean, just uh, all sorts of great behind the scenes stuff here from Crime Writers On, including summaries of our reviews. Crime Writers On behind the scenes. You'll get to see photos of the pet of the week, the crime of the week, all sorts of great stuff. And you just go to crimewriterson.com. Leave us your email address, and that'll be in your inbox on Thursday. That's right. So, Kevin, mm -hmm. does thus end our business section? Thus ends the business section. All right. Thank you so much, Kevin, for delivering the business section so smoothly. I'm going to go ahead and fade that music out right now. As smooth as avocado ice cream. <laughs>
As smooth as non-chewed avocado, right? As we as we learn, as right after your colonic, exactly oh, baking God. soda colonic. Yes. So much of what we want to do can seem impossible, but the highest achievers among us are the people still reaching for something, the ones who aren't satisfied to stay where they are and want to keep climbing higher. It's those people who approach the impossible and embrace it. There's a vehicle for people like that. It's called the Defender. The Defender is an icon reimagined through thoroughly modern design. It's got a tough, rigid body design and durable, lightweight monocoque architecture for extra strength. With precise detailing and compelling proportions, the exterior of the Defender is designed with integrity. This is a vehicle capable of great things, engineered to meet challenges head-on with an exterior that's been tested to the extreme. Experience the Defender's legendary capability off-road and on. And there's a family of vehicles for Defender. Meet the Defender 90, Defender 110, and the 8-seat Defender 130. So, are you ready to embrace the impossible? Explore the Defender at LandRoverUSA.com. Kevin, who's sponsoring us right now? Okay, uh, we're brought to you by Quince. Quince? Yeah, hey, look, we're um, into fall right now, and it's back to school, and so all those short shorts, tank tops, all those, you know... Cool linen clothes. That yes. would be, th- those are all going in the closet. You got to get ready for it's cashmere sweater time. It's cashmere. If you're going to go out and get decorative gourds, yes, miniature decorative gourds, decorative gourd season. Yes, that's <laughs> right. You got to shift your wardrobe. Luckily, Quince offers timeless and high quality items that you'll adore, ensuring your wardrobe stays fresh and you don't blow your budget. And remember, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Yes, they sure are. I love Quince so much, Kevin. Yeah. I was actually shopping on Quince like earlier today on my phone while I was mm-hmm. editing something. Mm-hmm. <sighs> There's something I want so badly. Tell me. It's a cashmere cardigan. Of course it is. It's so cute. But does it break the bank? No, of course it doesn't break exactly. the bank. Then I'll allow it. Oh, I will. I will allow it. Thanks for allowing it. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. How awesome is that? Make switching seasons a breeze with Quince's high-quality closet essentials, like a crop cashmere sweater. Go to mm. quince.com slash crime, crime for free shipping on your order and 365-day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash crime, crime to get free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash crime. crime. So, Kevin, who's our sponsor right now? Hey, we're brought to you by Babbel. Babble. Yeah, hey, we're more than halfway through the year, so let's fast forward to the end. Did you check off all of your dream goals? Are you still daydreaming? Are you still working on your New Year's resolution? We. This, <laughs> this is a great time because you can say, like, I'm finishing last year's New Year's resolution or I'm getting ready for the next one, and that resolution's got to be learning a new language. Oh. So speak like a whole new you with Babbel, the science-backed language learning app that gets you talking. You know, I, you could go the way of like spending hundreds of dollars like in private tutors and that kind of stuff. But Babbel, just you can get it done in like 10 minute lessons. You can. Right. And they're designed by people like having real conversations. Right. So that's the way Babbel gets you talking. It's not like when you were in French class in high school and you had to raise your hand. Madame to Gobert go- would like like roll her eyes because, you know, I couldn't do it. Yeah. 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 So, Où est la double vesse? Like, it's way better than that. Right. <laughs> I just, you know, like it just, you know, it's way better, way, way better than that. Everything is focused on conversation, Ah, not vocabulary. Yeah, yeah. I I love bureau. Yeah. (laughs) We're not doing declensions. Okay. uh, (laughs) So you'll be ready to talk wherever you go. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners right now. Kevin, you can get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, Mm -hmm. but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash crime writers. Crime get up, writers. Get up to 60% off at babble.com slash crime writers. Crime writers. Spelled B A B B E L dot com slash crime writers. Rules and restrictions may apply. So, Kevin, who's our sponsor for this episode? Hey, we're brought to you by HelloFresh. Hello, Fresh. Back to school season means shopping, after school activities, and a lot less time. So, skip the meal planning and grocery store runs with nutritious and delicious meals from HelloFresh. They handle most of the prep, too, and they've got great stuff. Not just for weeknights after everybody gets home from school. You got great stuff here uh, that we got in our last HelloFresh uh, delivery. Great stuff for kids that you can pack, 
bring, send it to school with it. Oh, get your mouth. That is so cute. Yeah, this is the, uh, I've got the card right here with the uh, directions for kids. Cheesy spinach roll-ups with ranch dipper, carrot sticks, apple slices, and tortilla chips. So this is you like can a make a little bento box, little for bento your box kids. with cute things. So I mean, you know, I don't think they have sushi that goes with this, but this wonderful uh, meal comes, you know, with carrots and hummus and cream cheese and apples and tortilla chips. I and want that tortillas. Yeah, you, and it's very easy make to make that uh, for me. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll make these for you. So cute. You're not little kid. I don't care. I, I would like, eat the heck out of this. Yeah, this this meal also just takes five minutes to make. It's a lunch make. bunch. I mean, it's not like in the, the like Breakfast Club where Claire opened up her little bento box and everybody thought it was weird. Yeah. People are going to be jealous. Yeah. And for a limited time, kids, eat free. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Crime Writers Kids. Crime Writers Kids. To unlock this exclusive offer. One free kids meal per box for two months oh. while subscription is active. Let's get that. That's free kids meals just by going to HelloFresh.com slash Crime Writers Kids. Crime Writers Kids. So, Kevin, uh, you think that you'd like to be an investigator for the medical board? Is that true? Oh, in another life? Absolutely. Why I, is that? I think it's amazing because it's like going on the most low stakes drug sting ever. It doesn't sound like low stakes to me. It sounds pretty high stakes. What do you think? What do you think? Like the fake doctors all of a sudden going to take out a hypodermic needle? It's like get you in the neck. Oh, and it's, ah! you mean going and pretending to be a patient? Yes, that part of it. And then Young gives her the big sell, the thing that makes Miracle Ranch different from other kinds of treatments. Our approach is not to treat cancer. Our approach is to improve the quality of the blood and this improve the quality of your health. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was great because you go in and you're like, oh, man, I've got like this arthritis. And they're like, yeah, I'll get rid of it with a magnet for a thousand dollars. Like, oh, cool. I got you now, motherfucker. <laughs> I think that I think that would be really amazing. I don't know why you'd go in on me with that. Oh, way, I totally right? I would. I would we could love open up that. our own agency. Oh, we should totally do it. I would be so in on this. I'd just be like, so, you know, I'm having this issue and I'm wondering what you can do and. Oh, my God. And then I'd go outside and just be like, <laughs> you could be the expert in all like the fake lady issues and I'll be oh, like, yeah. all the, be yeah. like, I'm sorry. I've been getting weird ads on my Facebook about porn and I'm having some lady issues now. Some lady issues. <laughs> what can you do for me, Doc? I've eaten 13 fat bombs today and I'm having some issues with my digestion system. I'm getting really sleepy. <laughs> I, I ate all those pancakes and now I'm sleepy. <laughs> but yes, that's what I'd love to do. Yeah. I think what Toby would like to do for the rest of his life is nothing but watch old episodes of Oprah and Tony Robbins videos. Is that true, Toby? It's amazing. Yeah. So Oprah in this, it's not as bad as Oprah has been in the stuff because she kind of pushes back a little bit. A little bit, though. Just a little bit. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, Western medicine has proven to be kind of effective fighting cancer, at least more so than avocados. <laughs> <laughs> Oprah is saying when chemo, radiation, and other interventions have been proven to help people survive cancer, why would you say no? But Kim stuck to her guns. Is this about holding on to the breast? It's about holding on to my right for choice. Okay. But it's still like you're platforming these people. And then Tony Robbins seems 100% in. And I guess I'm not 100% clear on exactly why Tony Robbins is popular. I thought he was like kind of like a finance guy or something. Yeah. But we were just talking about this with a friend of ours recently. It came about because we were also talking about Malcolm Gladwell, by the way. And, oh, yeah. and, and we were talking about our conversation about Malcolm Gladwell. And our friend said, that's how I feel about Tony Robbins. I don't understand why anyone likes that guy. He just talks and doesn't say anything. <laughs> yeah. And wasn't he like buddies with the Clintons or something? I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that way about Adam Sandler. Yes. Why does everybody find yes. him funny? But he's yeah. at least like nice. Yeah, exactly. People find him nice. Well, because he's from New Hampshire. Like we're like, oh, he's from Manch, Vegas. You know. His sister is a very respected dentist. He has that good album where the goat talks. Yeah. We, so I don't we've know. We've really gone off message here. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why like Oprah has to get on the wrong side of these things like constantly. Like, I guess I didn't really realize that. Like, it feels like Joe Rogan has kind of entered that space that was left by them, even though the audience is different. It's kind of like this sort of credulous, like, let's see what they have to say. You know, this sounds really cool. 
So um, anyway, it's not Nancy Grace, but it is. But like Oprah was also into the secret, wasn't she? I mean, didn't, yes. that was like she was the one who like put that out there. So which was also mentioned in this podcast. Yes. So. And that's just I mean, the secret is just unadulterated fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah. It is. This is a whole like uh, this is a whole what is the secret? pantheon of bullshit that Oprah pushed, that Gwyneth Paltrow pushes, that yes, Joe Rogan also pushes. It is so easy for people who are already like billionaires <laughs> to push this idea that if you dream of something, it will come true. Because for them, if they dream of something, it fucking comes true because they're billionaires right (laughs) right (laughs) and it's like yes so if i put this on my face my face looks better guess what you're also a billionaire and your face is always going to look fantastic (sighs) like that's gonna look better than mine this is incredible and gwyneth paltrow is also brought up in this this is incredible mentality like one of the things i'm obsessed with about gwyneth paltrow is her uh we talked about this on celebrity podcast podcast is her her talking about like her personal space and, and like her decor preferences. And she's like, and her candles that smell I, like her hoo-ha. I love spacious, bright, open spaces. And I'm like, of course you fucking do. You're a billionaire. <laughs> like outdoors. Of course you can have a spacious, bright, open space. You can afford all the fucking open space you want. The rest of us live in like 1200 fucking square feet. Gwyneth, like the hell. It's really incredible. These rich people and what they, you know, are able to tell you and sell you. And they attract in this case, like other people with money who think that they can buy it too. And like, it's, it's amazing. And what happened in this situation is that he would get people with money to come and they'd rack up these huge bills and they'd then be too sick to pay them. And then he'd trap them there and then they couldn't leave. I mean, apparently that's what was going on at least some of the time. And then they dump them at the hospital. Yeah. They drop Mm. them at the ER and be like, we don't know where they came from. Yeah. It's like a drive-by, like a gunshot victim that they don't want anyone to know was part yeah. of the crime thing. Whoop, here, oh. Another lady crawled onto the ranch. So like that whole no one dies at Disney thing where like no one technically dies at Disney World. Have you guys heard that? No. No. Oh, I have. That no one ever dies in Disney World. I don't know if that's true, but it's a rumor that I heard. Come on. Uh, <laughs> um, so well, one other thing that happens, Laura, is that uh, this guy has a tendency to twist people's experiences and his testimonials on his website. Like we heard about Dawn leaving and then getting real treatment and then him, you know, saying that like he actually helped her. And then, you know, this is sort of something that he does is he turns people's experiences into spins them into positives and marketing. Yeah. And I think, you know, we see that at the end when Larison goes and finds him at this this conference Mm. and talks to him. And he just starts like rattling a bunch of nonsense. To inoculate 8 billion people with a foundational material that's magnetic. Once they turn the switch on this, people will be dropping over dead. Yeah, that was exactly one person in the audience clapping for him. At first, he's like very conspiratorial about like, everyone's out to get me. Like these people come to me, I'm getting blamed for it. If they just weren't brave enough to like take charge of themselves, blah, blah, blah. But then it's so crazy because you find out that he's still got Dawn and a testimonial from Dawn on his website, even though he just totally you know, neglected to direct her to get appropriate medical care. And we hear at the end, like this horrible, sad situation where, you know, she's gotten this settlement. She's never going to see any money. She's like in all this pain. The only thing she can do is run her Etsy shop. Yeah. And I'm like, can we please buy something from her Etsy shop? No, we can't because she dies. (laughs) I know. But like, I want to like, I just, I feel like, just like it pisses me off. Yes, I'm like, it's I just want to do upsetting. something. I want to do something. I know, you know. I know. I was thinking the same thing that like on the show, we could talk about her Etsy store and like maybe promote yes. her Etsy store. And then yes. I heard the end of the podcast and I was like, God damn it's it. It's horrible. It's fucking horrible. And then also Toby, that story with the daughters who brought their mother home and, you know, she was just weighed nothing and they had, they were able to extract her from the place and she was just eating all the salt. What did you think of that story? I mean, that was, that was to me like, I think, as you said, talking about where the point of view, maybe like a story like that maybe could have been maybe the center of it. What do you think? Yeah, well, it's sort of it's like the flip side of kids joining cults, right? I mean, it's in this case, it's the children who are trying to save the mom from insanity. 
is increase salt intake and drink eight liters of water a day. Yeah. That's going to take a substantial amount of time out of your day just to choke down. Yeah. Stop taking your medicine. Yeah. You need more salt and eight liters of water a day. And then she owes $14,000 that they have to pay before they can even get her out of there. I do think that was a chance for like sort of a less omniscient view of the whole thing and sort of embed yourself with them, maybe. I mean, again, it's chameleon, so there, there are certain things that you expect, and that kind of steps out of that model, I think. But quite honestly, I don't feel like this story is interesting enough to just sort of carry it on its own. Like, I think you do have to do something that's creative or sort of outside the norm for these kinds of things, just because the story has just been told before. Yeah. Um, Kevin, were you surprised at all to find out where Young is today? I mean, I guess I shouldn't. But, you know, this is a guy who's like, this is me that's just pathological. He's not just like a regular con man, right? Where he's just like, oh, this didn't work. So going on to the next con. He's, he's just, not really a chameleon, you know, right? Right? He's just like, he is who I, he is. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you want to get really picky, he is what he is, which is despicable. And just somebody who's going to sell probably literal snake oil. But, you know, it's like, OK, hey, you know, you go to jail and you pay all these fines and you learned your lesson and now you sell aluminum siding or you're going to scam <laughs> people playing three card Monty. But it's like, you know, just getting right back into the medical field, the quote unquote holistic or alternative medicine field. And of course, now he's an anti-vaxxer and finding did they explain that if he's making money somehow in this in this space, giving advice or whatever. Which is, this isn't a guy who's like going to find a new con that works. He's just going to dig into this more and more until he, you know, takes too much of his own avocado shit and dies from a, you know, colorectal cancer. Yeah. Well, it's like all of those people do. Like, it's like when Bikram got shut down and yep. then he just like went to another country and you're like, oh, okay, he's just moved on. Laura, what did you think at the near the end? We hear Larison talking to this woman who's sort of out. But then she tells Larison that she cured her own cancer with essential oils. Oh, God. I mean, what's next? Crystals? I don't know. I think that goes back to what is it about the psychology of people that get into something like this? There's already something there. She was like, oh, I totally agree that he was full of shit, but this is what I did with my own body. And, I, and I'm like, but did you really? Yeah. It's very sad. It's, it's, it's sad. And I'm like, I'm all for positive thinking. I think positive thinking and like, approaching things. Like I had a friend who had metastatic breast cancer for like almost 20 years and she was the most positive person. And I believe that is why she continued to beat it because she was just, she didn't give up. But the curing with the oils and the crystals and like the Ouija board, I don't know. But I think that goes like Dawn, like when you hear about her backstory, you're like, these are the people that are easily targeted in scams like this. Like, you know, Dawn was born on a commune and of all places, Humboldt County. Like, of course she was. Yeah. And, you know, they basically did like home remedies and they didn't go to the doctor and they were hippies. And, oh, but now we're going to use like ecstasy for our treatment instead of like tinctures because ecstasy will make it more happy when we feel. But, you know, so I think hearing that lady at the end, I think that just sort of brings it full circle in terms of like there is a type of personality that is always going to buy into something like this. And that is why there is always an opportunity for the next person to step into this area and start something new. So Kevin, it could be you. You could be next. You could start something. Toby, it could be you. No, it couldn't be me. I don't know. <laughs> it could be. I think one of the things about having a bunch of shows about like wellness scams and stuff is that it does portray a certain segment as being particularly gullible. And I think at least in my mind, everybody's got their gullibility point, right? It's like people who are effective con men find the people who their con is going to fit in with their worldview. And then you use that. So there's like financial scams, like where you pay $10,000 to go to some seminar to learn how to buy real estate. Or, I mean, I think sports betting is sort of in the same, like DraftKings is sort of a similar type thing, which is like the business doesn't work unless people lose. So you're going in there believing that you are going to somehow buck a system, which everybody loses at, and you get sucked in and you're just pouring money into it. So anyway, I think one thing that comes out of all these, again, this like sudden focus on wellness stuff is portraying a certain segment as being more gullible. You know, for the most part, it's like people who are sort of predisposed to new agey type stuff. Seekers, right? Yeah, which, you know, I, I don't personally find very compelling, but 
you know, it doesn't mean they should be demonized for falling for scams when plenty of other people are falling for scams. They just don't happen to be this particular one. Right. The highest achievers among us are the people still striving, still reaching for something. The people who aren't satisfied to stay where they are and want to keep climbing higher. And it's those people who approach the impossible and embrace it. There's a vehicle for people like that. It's called the Defender. The Defender is an icon reimagined for a new generation of explorers through thoroughly modern design. Its interior is modern and functional with rich material finishes and quality craftsmanship. When you're in a Defender, you can tell the interior is built for purpose. Luxury appointments throughout and practical storage options ensure you adventure in comfort. This is a vehicle capable of great things and engineered to meet challenges head on. Wherever you're headed, experience the Defender's legendary capability, both off-road and on. And there's a family of vehicles for Defender. Meet the Defender 90, Defender 110, and the 8-seat Defender 130. Are you ready to embrace the impossible? Explore the Defender at LandRoverUSA.com. ADT knows a lot can happen in a second. One second, you're happily single. And the next second, you catch a glimpse of someone and you don't want to be. Maybe one second you have a business idea that seems like a pipe dream. And the next, you have an LLC and a dream come true. And when it comes to your home, one second you feel safe and the next, something goes wrong. But with ADT's 24-7 professional monitoring, you still feel safe. Because when every second counts, count on ADT. Visit ADT.com today. Sometimes it takes a different approach to help you unlock your true potential. Capella University's game-changing FlexPath format helps you learn at your own pace and fit earning a degree into your life. From before you enroll to after you graduate, you'll be supported by people who are invested in your success, so you can pursue your goals knowing that help is available if you need it. Imagina tu futuro de otra manera en capella.edu. This episode is supported by FX's Grotesquerie, a new series from executive producer Ryan Murphy. Heinous crimes unsettle a small community, and the local detective feels these atrocities are eerily personal, as if someone or something is taunting her. Starring Nisi nash Betts, Courtney B. Vance, Leslie Manville, and Travis Kelsey, FX's Grotesquerie premieres September 25th on FX. Stream on Hulu. All right, let's do what we do. Let's let our listeners know, should they check out Chameleon, Dr. Miracle, Laura Bricker, thumbs up or thumbs down for this podcast? Okay, so I'm going thumbs sideways with this podcast. It wasn't horrible. It's just that it's a story that we've heard before. And I felt like they had good interviews. They had good information. It was done in a very straightforward way. It was very like, here's all the information. It's easy to follow. There's this guy who's doing this crazy scam and giving people colonics and eating baking soda, whatever. We've heard stories like this before. And I think that's why it's not a thumbs up for me because I felt like I was listening to it and I was like, so why is this different? And what is my takeaway from this? Because I felt like I didn't have any great revelation of like, boy, now I know about that after listening to this podcast, but I can't give it a thumbs down because There was good reporting. There was good interviewing. Everything else was solid. It was just the story itself didn't really rise to the level of like a chameleon double life sort of twisty, turny, like shocking revelation type thing. It was more like me reflecting on, gee, what diet am I going to try next? So thumbs sideways. Toby Ball, thumbs up or thumbs down for Chameleon, Dr. Miracle. I pretty much echo Lars thoughts, you know, devil in the ditch. We all really liked I was psyched to see what Larson Campbell did next. I don't think this necessarily plays to her strengths. I thought the way she kind of described family dynamics and interesting and sort of eccentric characters and and things like that, she did really, really well. Like that seemed to be like really the strength of Devil in the Ditch. And there's really almost none of that here. Like this is just a very, very conventional podcast about something that we've seen and heard in the past, it's not a bad podcast. And if you haven't heard about wellness scams, you'll probably really like it. But if you've devoured eight things about wellness scams at this point, like this isn't going to break any new ground for you. So yeah, I was just sort of a thumb sideways, you know, in the end, I just kind of wish she'd picked a different story to cover I feel like it was like from the inception, 
this didn't end up being great. And then regardless of how decent the rest of it was, the idea just wasn't going to allow it to be that good. Kevin Flynn. I think you guys all encapsulated what I I was thinking, too. This is a thumb sideways for me because it wasn't done poorly. I mean, what it is is good, you know, but the story is somewhat rudimentary because we've heard this before and it just doesn't have the twist. One of the things, you know, as having been a, a nonfiction writer is that it's hard to get the pushback like, this killer is interesting, but wouldn't it be more interesting if they had a twin brother? It's like, well, they don't because that's not what happened in real life. And so in a way, you're kind of limited to the facts of what that case was. And it just seems like it went by the playbook step by step. And that's not the fault of this team. But I do think, like you guys said, that there were some things. That were, I mean, I think we really enjoy this host, but you didn't have an opportunity here to sort of like really change the tone and make it an interesting listen to as opposed to something that maybe we're just kind of getting the rundown on what this scam was. So I'm not going thumbs down on this, but I really can't say this is like really groundbreaking. So I got to stay sideways on that. Yeah, I'm sideways, too, for a lot of the reasons you said, but for other reasons, too. Even if we hadn't heard of stories like this before, I would still be sideways because this didn't sparkle in any way. It didn't like I wasn't excited to listen to the next episode. I wasn't like, oh, I can't wait to hear what happens next. I can't believe this is happening. It was all very mid like it was had definitely had sort of this like mid storytelling quality it wasn't like page turner so to speak in many ways and a lot of these other stories we've heard sort of along these lines sort of hit bigger themes even though we kind of knew we may have heard the story before. I mean, I'm thinking about some of the things you cited, Kevin. Um, obviously, the dropout is a singular story, mm-hmm. obviously. But that being said, the dropout hits the theme of like venture capital money and the fact that like people are willing to invest billions of dollars in something that sounds sexy, despite the fact that it doesn't fucking work. And it's like the pot commitment of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like Dr. a lot. Death season four is very similar in that way. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, there's a lot of these kinds of stories that speak to something that's like systemically broken or that's so like even the mystic mother thing like we had serious like we had questions like why did they follow this person she wasn't saying anything or doing anything she didn't seem particularly special and well that's pl- mother god mystic mother was the one oh. where everybody was having sex oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. See the mother guys were mother, it, mother but- god one was the one where but that mother god one also tied to sort of current events with the colloidal silver stuff and the QAnon. So you're all just blending together yeah the QAnon point, yeah. connection like there were some like current threads there you know mm-hmm. like there was some sort of a compelling why nowness or a bigger question or an illumination and this didn't really have that i mean it would come in in like little bits with like mentions of things like gwyneth and wellness or whatever but what i'm really hoping for and which we haven't really gotten and i know that there's a fear around it and even jane marie's podcast didn't quite get to it is like a real takedown of the wellness industry like a real look at it and a real takedown of it and that is scary Because it does get to something that really will insult a lot of people Mm -hmm. and it will hurt people's feelings. It'll make people feel bad and it will expose whoever does the reporting to some scrutiny and potentially some threats of lawsuits by some really powerful people. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the shit that's in goop is a scam. And a lot of the shit that's being put out there by well-known people who are telling you to buy things or that they use things or put things on their face or whatever it's lies. It's fucking lies. That's kind of what I, I wish someone like Larison would be able to get at least a little piece of, even if it's not like the big scary one. So yeah, thumb sideways for me for this podcast. All right, now it's time for my favorite part of the podcast, a little something I like to call the crime, crime of the week. Of the week. <laughs> Great Britain's crime minister, Diana Johnson, made a speech to police superintendents about the nation's epidemic of antisocial behavior, theft and shoplifting. When she finished, she discovered someone had stolen her handbag. While overall crime is down in the UK, thefts of purses and mobile phones are up 40 percent. And polls show Brits trust in the ability of police to solve crimes and maintain law and order are at record lows. A 56-year-old man was later arrested in connection to the stolen pocketbook. It's not clear what the motive for the theft was. Was it a crime of opportunity or is he just a fan of irony? 
So panel, the crime minister getting her handbag nicked is quite the embarrassment. What's the next ironic misfortune to befall a government official? Laura Bricker, what do you think? I think the police commissioner shoplifting some donuts. <laughs> Toby Ball, what do you think is the next ironic misfortune to befall a government official? Uh, minister of the Interior gets locked out of his house. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Flynn, what is the next ironic misfortune to befall a government official? The Home Secretary gets evicted. Oh, not bad, not bad. All right. Laura Bricker, if folks want to reach out. the Prime Minister get his Amazon delivery like... What? Lost. Does the prime minister uh, yeah. get his Amazon delivery lost? He did. Yeah. He couldn't find the house. He did. He was prime. He was prime. Oh. All it's right, Laura Bricker. everything in two days. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Laura Bricker. If folks want to reach out to you and say hello to you online, how can you be found? Uh, you can find me at Laura Bricker on Instagram and Twitter. And Toy Ball, folks have questions for you about the latest episode of Rip Current that they may have listened to. How can they find you online? They can find me at Toby Ball and H. Kevin Flynn, how can you be found? I'm a Kevin P. Flynn. You can P fi- stands for peen, Laura Bricker's <laughs> Facebook feed. Oh, no. <laughs> and I can't can, take any more peen. If you can follow me everywhere, including Twitter or Instagram, if you want to send me your favorite keto dessert recipes so I can look at them, uh, you can find me at Reb Lavoie. You can also follow the show everywhere at Crime Writers On, on Twitter. You can find us on YouTube. But I mostly encourage you to join our incredible community in our official Crime Writers on Facebook discussion group. Just go to Facebook, find us there, hit join the group. We'll let you in if you seem nice. Get episodes early and ad free at patreon.com slash partners in crime media. You'll also get the crime writers on after show married with podcast, Laura Bricker's leave it to Bricker podcast and Toby Ball's deep dive book club podcasts. Our theme song was composed and performed by Ty Gibbons. Our editor is the wonderful Livy Burdett. Executive producer of this show is Kevin Flynn. This podcast was recorded in studio C the closet in our New Hampshire basement where we also maintain a pH level of 12 or better. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty high. On behalf of all the crime writers, thanks so much for listening. We will catch you Later. later. A doctor said he could cure most ills with an alkaline diet. His patients learned the hard way. He was wrong. We'll talk about the latest season of Chameleon, Dr. Miracle. Spoil alert. What? He's good. Yeah, he's you mean the could. alkaline diet didn't actually yeah. work? Oh, okay. He could not be much of a podcast, right? All right. All right, let's do what we do. Let's let our listener know, should they check out Chameleon? Our one listener? Oh, that's not <laughs> <Our> listener. <laughs> yeah, Apple, Apple, iOS, you know? Yes, yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes it takes a different approach to help you unlock your true potential. With Capella University's game-changing FlexPath learning format, you gain relevant skills you can apply to your career right away. Earn your degree from an accredited university and be confident in the quality of your education. Imagina tu futuro de otra manera en capella.edu. Capella University is accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. Learn more at capella.edu slash accreditation.